it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died. And I know, and I know it was the blood for me. On that night that Jesus was betrayed at the Passover table, he took bread from that table, he broke it and gave thanks. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, do it in remembrance of me together. In like manner, he took the cup. He said, this is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me together. Lord God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And thank you right now, oh God, that as we reverence you, as we offer you the awe that you are. Lord God, we are just struck with with overwhelming gratefulness that your son Jesus Christ would go to a hill called Calvary and give his life for us. So God, on today, we wanted to set aside a holier, a more intentional moment for you, oh God, because Jesus, your son, told the church that this is one of the two ordinances and as often as we do it, we ought to do it in holy and, 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 and striking remembrance of him. So God, we pray that you've been glorified in this place and we pray that some person has been edified in this place and we give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise that the people of God say together, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for his love towards us through Jesus. He died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, he never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word for me. Oh, one day he died. Oh, and I know it. I feel like church this morning. Oh, for me. And because of that, I'm going to say, oh, victory is mine. Yeah. Somebody ought to say victory today. Victory today is mine. Yeah, Mother Cash. I, I told Satan to get. Oh, because victory. How did I get the victory? I'm going to tell you a little while. Oh, it's in the name of Jesus. We have, we have the victory. Oh, in the name, Satan will have to, will have to flee. Oh, tell me, who can? When we call that great name, what's his name? It's Jesus, it's Jesus, victorious Jesus, oh, I love Jesus, oh, we have the victory. We, we, we got to get to the word, but I feel like church today. Hallelujah. You ought to just give somebody a, a, hair, a high five across the room in the air and say, in the name of Jesus. I feel better. I feel stronger. I feel wiser in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you grab your Bibles, those of you who are standing, I'll give you some time. 
Hallelujah. We're going to have church in this place. <laughs> I, I, I don't know who said we can't have church at 930. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise God. I praise God for his love. And I praise God for this congregation because I'm telling you, y'all showed up and y'all showed out. You ought, to tell the neighbor, you ought to tell your neighbor, we the best church this side of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say, you ought to tell your neighbor, I almost gave up. But then there was Jesus. <laughs> All on my mind, but then there was Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Ha! It's something about the name Jesus. There's just something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. The sweetest name I know. Ah, y'all. Don't, don't push me. I'm close to the end, Doc. <laughs> yeah! First Corinthians chapter 1. Come on, man. Why are you come on, Doc? Oh, 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 oh yeah. Yeah. I think God honors intentionality. I think God honors intentionality. Let me tell you something. I feel better right now at 9.30 than I used to at 10.45. You know why? Because 10, 10, by 10.45, I had been to Starbucks. I had washed my car. I had done all other kind of stuff. But this morning, I had to get up at 6.30. Saying I'm going to be at the church between 7.30 and 8. So I didn't do nothing this morning but say I was glad when they said unto me, the first fruits of my day going to belong to the Lord. I ain't watched no CNN. I don't know what's going on in the world. But one thing I do know is that Jesus is still on the throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we got to go. We got to go. Because I. Woo! We got to go. But I feel the Lord in this place. Amen. If you don't feel him, shame on you. I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You came with some other agenda this morning at the sanctuary besides Jesus. You probably ain't real happy. You probably real irritated right now because you had other agendas. But my only agenda this morning was Jesus. I came to the church to preach Jesus. I came to the church to see Jesus. And when I leave here, I want to take the same Jesus with me. And I want Je people to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me go ahead and get on. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Thank you, Lord. 
Lord, may the words of our mouth, meditation of our heart be accepted in thy sight. For you are our strength and redeemer. In Jesus' name, let us say together, amen. Amen. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. <laughs> to those of us who are being saved. Brother Jamar, that's why some people, they stand around here so self-righteous because they think they so saved. Past tense, already done. But sanctification, church, is a process. <laughs> we, we, it, there's a time that's coming more when it says, and we, out, we all shall be changed. That's when corruption puts on incorruptible. And you know what? You got to pass through death. To get there so we are being saved I'm already preaching y'all don't know it yet <laughs> to those of us who are being saved here it is it is the power of God I wasn't going to read this but I'm going to keep going to 25 media ministry for it is written I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, somebody say we're called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because of the foolishness of God is wiser. The foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. We're going to read again for your hearing, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. I just want to talk simply from the subject, the cross. I only need a few moments today because that is the message. The message is the cross. The cross you should have been able to reflect on when you saw the table rolling in, thinking about the body that was broken and hung on that old rugged cross. What is going on in the church, just take a moment, it is about uh, AD 50 when Paul uh, spent some time in Corinth. He stayed there for 18 months. Uh, then he left on a missionary journey that landed him in Ephesus. Of course, we know Ephesus because of the epistle, which is epistle is a letter written to the Ephesians. It is when at this time that Reverend Isles that Paul gets word of what's going on in Corinth. Uh, he wrote his first letter. Keep stay with me. He wrote his first letter that is known by theologians and scholars to be the lost letter because the book or the letter of 1 Corinthians is actually the second letter that he wrote to them. Uh, we know this by a short glimpse to what his comment is, what comment is made, take me media ministry, 1 Corinthians 5 and 9, in 1 Corinthians 5 and 9, Paul talks about his previous letter. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornication. In other words, I wrote about this before. So then it is in around A.D. 
57, Sister Andrea Sanders, that Paul gets word, even though you wrote a letter, a letter that we don't have in contemporary ages, the lost letter, even though you wrote before, here it is, the household of Chloe sends word to Paul, who's in Ephesus now, saying, we got problems here. And they're getting worse and worse all the time. So when he enters into the book of First Corinthians, the one that we do have, we understand that Paul is now addressing some major issues and problems going on in Corinth. Get this. Paul is familiar with Corinth. And we don't even realize that, get this, he has already known this issue because, get this, though he's writing this letter from Ephesus, get this, he had already written a letter to Romans, get this, from, for, from Corinth. When he spent those 18 months, we discover that he wrote a letter, the letter of Romans, he wrote it, get this, from Corinth. I like what Warren Wisby says right here. He says literally that means Paul, when he's writing to the Romans, he's looking out the window at the conditions of that church, of that community, and he tells the Romans the, 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 the foulness that's going on in the world. That's in Romans chapter 1. Take me, Brother Media Ministries. Uh, Sister T, thank you. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. I'm going to read all the way to 31. I'm going to be almost done. But look what he says is going on when he looks out the window in Corinth as he's writing to the Romans. He says, therefore, verse 24, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served creature rather than creator uh, who, who is blessed forever. Amen. Get this. Look what he says in verse 26. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use what is against nature. Y'all know what that means, right? Women have, oh, y'all, oh, my God, I'm going to keep going. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of women burned in their lust for one another men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which was due even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to uh, y'all know it in King James Version, a reprobate mind to do things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness sexual immorality wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder strife deceit evil mindfulness uh, they are whisperers, get this, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boastful, in the, in, uh, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. That was going on in Corinth. This was a messed up church. I said it was a messed up church. Matter of fact, I'm going to cut across the field because we got to be in Sunday school by 11, no later than 11. And I got to give you about a 10 or 15 minute break before then. So I don't have much time. So let me tell you what's going on at this church. First of all, this church is a defiled church. Somebody say they're defiled. See, 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 we, we have to be in the world. But we should not be of the world. We can be in the world, but the world ought not be in us. We ought not act at the church like they act out there. I told you on last week, sometimes they act better out there than we do in here. <laughs> I, I spent some time in the streets. I'm not proud of it, but it's my testimony. And some young man online needs to understand, I, as much as I looked over my shoulder back then, I still didn't look over it as much as I do at God's church. I didn't think I'd get many amens right there. Because you got to be careful about people that smile in your face. All the time they want to take your place, backstabbers. 
Matter of fact, I read a, I read a meme on yesterday. I posted it. Some of y'all saw it. Some of y'all might have liked it. Some of y'all might have not liked it. But it says, get this, they're not really mad at you. They're just mad it's you. <laughs> what I mean by that, they don't have a problem with you as a person, but they got a problem with the Lord blessing and favoring you. So they got to try to pull you down. They're, they're, they're a defiled church. Sexual immorality. They have in Corinth temple prostitutes. Meaning you could go to the church house and have you a good old time. They, they reduced the temple to nothing more than a brothel. They, they, they felt like who they were and what they were in the world was who they could be in the church. Just because we're trying to reach all men, get this, we catch them and God cleans them. That's why I talked about to those of us who are being saved, we realize we're just nobodies trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Uh, 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 they're a defiled church. They got stinking thinking. Don't nobody trust nobody. Nobody like nobody. <laughs> defiled. They're not only a defiled church, but here it is. Uh, this is a big one. They're a def divided church. They have at least three or four personalities upon which they set tripping. They, some people are claiming Apollo, some people claiming Paul, some people claiming Jesus. They're claiming they sets and get this. And it's not only that they're claiming what they're claiming, they're now bumping heads with each other. Ooh. Divided. Church, thank you, Sister Pigney. Amen. My dad would say lights and walls. I'm so repetitive, but it's systematic theology, it's systematic in my, in, in my process. The way I was taught was systematically. So there, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Sister Fr Francis Spencer. You, you remember the Bible memory work of the National Convention that would come down, matriculate through the state and the district, and we would, we'd have to learn those 40 or 46 verses, and that's systematic theology. So we realize that there's some things and some scriptures that you ought to just know as a Christian. You ought to just know them. Uh, but, but, but one thing that I will say is that Jesus, uh, 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 he, he said, that the way that people will know that we are his disciples is by how we love one another. And see, some people don't understand that, you know what, we can accuse leadership, we can accuse pastor, we can accuse the, the church of not bringing folks in. But get this, as soon as we bring them in the front door, you got a rolling back door that you send them back out of. Because as soon as they come around and say, if people in the church act like that, they're divided. They're defiled, they're divided, so then they're disgraced. What do you mean by disgrace? Because, get this, what power do we have if we are not imitators of Christ? What, 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 is, what is the power of our testimony? If people don't look to us and see greater love has no man than this, than he who would lay down his life for a friend. I just saw something different right there, Brother James. He calls me friend. I never saw, I never, you know, I never heard that until the Spirit just fast said to me right now, Mother Cassie, because get that. God calls, he says, Greater love has no man than this, than he who would lay down his life for a friend. A friend? A sinner. Outside of the ark of safety, a sinner that don't know that he don't know Jesus. But in the pre-salvific moment, he still called me friend. That sounds like, Sister Barbara Anderson, what the old folks meant when it says, he loved me, even when I didn't love myself. Romans 5 and 8, get this, uh, uh, God commended his love towards us in that while we were sinners, I'm still preaching the cross, Christ died, not because I deserved it. 
while we were sinners. See, see, we exist in time. Kronos. The Lord exists in eternity. When you was at Super 8 with somebody you had no business being with, that happened at your time. But being that he's eternal, when he was at the cross, he knew you was at Super 8. Y'all miss Wow, you were sinning. Low down. He died. Uh, uh, so, sermon's almost over. They were defiled, divided, and disgraced people. And to anybody who's ever felt defilement, division, or disgrace, downtrodden, depressed, defeated, there was one solution cross defilement is cleansed at the cross division is di diminished at the cross disgrace uh, is erased and regraced at the cross. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. Once was lost. But now I'm found. Was blind. Now I see. It was all at the cross. And I like what Paul does here real quickly. I'll go through a few moments, a few nuggets. He says, get this. Paul says in verse 1, I, Paul. Somebody say called. Called to be an apostle. See, I see right here some duplicity. I see some division. I see he's already lying. He's already dealing with it. Because he already knows. Some are claiming Apollos. Some are claiming him. Some claim Jesus. Some are Stephen. They, 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 they all over the place. And he says, yes, I'm called to be a leader in the church. I, 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 I like somebody, yeah, somebody say called. Thank you. As you help me with the spirit is speaking through you right now. Somebody say called. See, a whole lot of times we think that call is nothing but preaching. And so Paul is saying, yeah, I'm called to be a preacher. I'm called to be a leader in the church. I'm called. But, but, but I'm not the only one who's called. See, see, that's why people can sit in pews. <laughs> they, 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 they can sit in the annals of judicial mindset and judge the preacher because he's supposed to be called if you are in Christ you're called <laughs> I, I'm, I'm attaching this to Wednesday Bible study for those of you who haven't started watching or attending yet let me tell you something I told you about something called the ek kaleo Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kaleo is called, ek is out of. That's where we get our word, ecclesia, for the church. And we are the called out ones. If you're here, it's because you're called. Don't let the devil fool you into having a double standard. Because sometimes we think certain people, well, they see... Iles, you call. So, I can do what I do. But you can't do it. Because you call. 
So God holds you to a high standard. See, God don't have preacher standards, deacon standards, trustee standards, secretary standards, committee standards. God got saintly Christian standards. We are all judged on the same level by the same God. You got folks that's not committed at the church talking about the pastor. That's how you know when something's in the land. It's always that awkward when you say something. Ooh, did he just say that? Yeah. 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 I teach every Bible study. Some in the almost five years I've been here ain't been yet. But they talk about me. Is, what are, you, are you preaching the text? Are you preaching the word? Yes, I am. Because he says, I Paul called to be an apostle. Somebody say, that's verse one. So I get it, that's number one. But, but, but look at the following number two. He said, to the church. Somebody say, that's us. Of God. Which is at Corinth. Get that. Marshall, they are at Corinth. But they're not supposed to be in Corinth. See, the text is intentional that there's a difference between at something and being in it. <laughs> Y'all don't even know what to say, amen. I like this. But look, he talks to those, the church, that are at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in, say in, at Corinth, but in Christ. <laughs> I'm preaching this. I'm feeling this. Uh, Corinth in Christ. Somebody talk, somebody say, this is our positional anointing. See, they used to say it ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. I understand what they say, and I understand the sentiment. But in Christ, when it comes to Christianity, it's not where you're at, it's who you in. See, you as a Christian, Sister Harper, we have two positions we have a geographical position and we have a spiritual position ah, their geography is at Corinth ah, but their spirituality is in Christ Somebody's going to feel me on this. I always got to put something like this in here, Sister Morgan. I remember at about 27, 28 years old. By that time, Brother Thomas, the only night off was Monday. <laughs> Crystal Palace was Tuesday. Beamers was Wednesday. <laughs> the max was on Thursday. Ladies night. Terrace was on Friday. <laughs> this is going to be crazy. It was a routine. It was Crystal Palace, the max, then the Terrace on Saturday. Then it was Blues Afternoon Brunch on Sunday. Just kind of every day. There was every night when we got out of work, I was in the military, there was somewhere to be. Sometimes there was somewhere to be before the place to be. We call that happy hour. I I'm going somewhere. Mother Terry, Tiffany, every evening I had a place to be at. I wasn't just at them, Brother Bird, I was in them. I was in that, and that was in me. My brother, I'm almost done. I'll never forget. <laughs> y'all, I, 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 I don't put on, y'all. You, you, you don't... Haters hate, just hate haters. 
But I love Jesus. And it's real in my heart. I'll never forget. Y'all, I'm serious. <laughs> I, went, I went to Dillard's in St. Louis. Mother Johnson, I bought, a, I was polo down. I bought some new polo boots, bought some polo jeans, and I bought the, I bought, I bought the, I, the polo, I had everything, I had polo drawers. <laughs> Did he just say drawers? I said, I said it. I just want y'all to know, I was po polo socks, I was polo down. I'm going to go a step further. I was, I was, a, I was a, at the time, I was like an E2, E3. For the wife in the towel, I didn't have that kind of money. Well, the shirt still had the tag in it. Pants, I had tucked the tag. I was taking it back Saturday. Y'all see, some of y'all don't even know when to tell the truth. And the only thing I wasn't going to take back was the drawers. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm, I promise. I'm almost done. Y'all, I went through all that, man. And, and I, I was fresh to death. See, see, we got Asian, Chinese, Japanese. But back in that day in St. Louis, anybody didn't know anything about St. Louis, they had places called Chop Suey. Stop, stop, take out Chop Suey. I got Tupac and Biggie blowing. I'm ready, y'all. I, 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 I had stopped by the package store. I'm ready. Man, I, I already know how to cut my hair. I done trimmed up. I done shaved. I'm fresh. I'm in the middle. Oh, you gonna kill him, boy? You gonna kill him? <laughs> but Mike, this is this is this is true, man. I got to the club, the Max Friday. I'm sorry, Terrace Friday. Y'all, I got. I went up to the. I stood in line. Got my little first little old drink, Thomas. Jasmine, I went and found the walls. I, I, I only danced sometimes. I, I, I just kind of chilled in the cut. I'm back there. His name was Lou Feliciano, friend of mine. He was go, they were going to be meeting me there. They were in O'Fallon. I, I was uh, in St. Louis. We were meeting in East St. Louis at the terrace. And y'all, immediately, I'm saying it that way on purpose. I want to give it immediately, something came over me. And I said, I don't like this no more. Yeah. 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 It just, all of a sudden. Lou Feliciano, I hope you know he's from the East Coast. He's Puerto Rican. But you know, he got that, he got that hood. He don't look like us, but man, he got flavor. Yo, what's up, man? What's up, Kevy Kev, KP? What you sipping on, dog? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, man, I'm fixing to go. What? You sick? You, you, something you ate? What's going on? I said, man, I just, I don't know. I, I didn't plan to preach this, y'all. Like, not like this, but I'm following the spirit. It wasn't in me. I, I suddenly was no longer into it. I wasn't in that. I, I was there at that moment. I was there geographically. I was at the terrace, but I didn't no longer want to be in it. That is the power of God unto salvation. I hadn't been praying about it. Because when I left home at 18, I probably went to church five times from 18 to 27. You know when that was? When I went home, visited my dad for a pastor's anniversary. Oh, I, I could be in there. I could church too. Ooh, ooh, hallelujah. That's what some of y'all do now. 
This is the place you at, but you ain't in. You in somewhere else. You at here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't finish somebody. But, but, but something happened. I don't know what it was. And I think the reason that the Lord had me go this way is because this is a segue to why we're here now and then going into our classrooms. Now, you really got something to talk about. Go ahead. Whip on me in class. Laugh about me. Remember pastor talking about he all polo down, gonna take the stuff back, that ain't right. But don't forget in your class, young people, but he said something happened. I'm tired of working in God's church. And as soon as we give them they, they, they graduation Bible and a $150 graduation check, they leave. They know they ain't never coming back. So I want while they're at PMG to all of a sudden be in it. We got to make sure it's in them before they leave. Because once they leave and they act somewhere else, that is a whole, you know what, the proclivity of man, the depravity of man, that we're born in sin and unrighteousness, get that. The world stuff is more attractive to them that are perishing. You thought I wasn't still preaching. This church and sweating and he up there hollering and when he gonna be done mom it's foolishness until you are in Christ something happened here it is there's a few things I suspect that happened sister James one thing is Proverbs 22 and 6. For 18, 19 years, this is not original, it's going to be old, but go with me. For 18 years, Jasmine, you, we were at that same church. You had the same problem I had. I'm a little older than you, uh, a lot older, but you get to my point. You grew up there. I remember when she was way down here. We had a drug problem. They drug us to church. They drug us to Sunday school. They, see, y'all, some of y'all ain't gonna know what this word, this, this, this acronym is. They drug me to BTU. <laughs> We've been to church all day. We gotta go back to church. Six o'clock Sunday, BTU. Bible swore drill, Bible memory work, simple speaking. Drug us. But what they understood, church, was Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child. In the way he should go. He shouldn't have a choice before he leave. He should go to church. He should go to Sunday school. Now, he might not go when he leaves, but you know what's going to happen? When he up in the club, polo down, fresh to death, 10 years later, something's going to happen. And he won't be able to depart from it. And he's going to go that place that he was taught that he should go. That's the power of the cross. They were, I, I, I got to hunk it off. They were defiled. The cross cleaned them up. He said, you're called, here it is, to be saints. Write these points down real quickly. Look at them when you get home. I'm not going to preach them now. The Lord has already preached to us. But he says, get this, that we're called first to be holy. 
That's verse 2. Somebody say verse 2. Called to be saints. What does saint mean? Saint. How y'all so holy? It, it means to be set apart. We ought not be like them. Set apart. Uh, we're also, I'm, 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 I'm moving fast. We're also not only called a holy, holiness. There's only one other thing, not three. There's only two. We're called into fellowship. Somebody write in your notes, verse 10. That begins at verse 10. And I'll just read that to you. He says, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be, here it is, perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Get this, he says it again. He said it in verse 10, brethren, somebody write down brethren, circle brethren, that speaks of what he's calling us to, unity, fellowship, togetherness, fitly joined, tightly joined together. Same mind, verse 11, for it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of the household of Chloe, that there be contentions among you. He asks a wonderful question at verse 13, and I end with that verse. Is Christ divided? If we're all Christ-like, we are Christ-minded. We have the heart of Christ. Colossians 1.18, Christ, the head of the church. He's saying, is Christ divided? How in the world then are we divided? You talking about you're of Paul. Here's the cross. I wasn't crucified for you. I didn't die for you. I'm talking about Apollos. I was die for you. It was Christ on the cross. I'm done. Because we know that on one Friday, after going through kangaroo courts from judgment hall to judgment hall, what happened? They hung an innocent man on a Roman cross. They ridiculed him. They spat on him. What did he say? Father, forgive them. They don't know. He had no business between two thieves. He had no business with his earthly mother. He looked toward heaven and said, Eli, Eli, I'm a sabbatini. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Here it is to fulfill one of those Bible study crowd, 340 prophecies that he did fulfill. He said, I thirst. Took the bitter stop. Hung his head. After saying, Tetalistai, it is finished. He also says, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Somebody say it happened on the cross. I don't want to quote it wrong, but somebody will understand it. You can look it up, Google it, but it fits right here. I think it says three nails, one spike, four given at the cross. Took him down from that cross. After they verified he was dead, they hit him in the side. Out came blood and water. Boxes have Holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head, not even in death. He didn't have a burial plot. The poor carpenter, prestigious man from Arimathea named Joseph. You can put him in my tomb. Now, 
I know we try to shout people to say because he let the Lord use it because he knew he was going to give it back. But, but, but that, that's presumptuous. We don't know that. What reality is, biblically speaking, the man gave up his grave. He didn't know. <laughs> I think that's why you can't beat God giving. <laughs> no matter how hard you try. <laughs> we got to end right here. We got to end right here. It happened at the cross. He didn't stay dead, though. I got to get him up, y'all. On the third day morning, very early, my dad would say, before the cock crow, he got up. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John say he got up. Mary, Martha, and the other women said he got up. That angel clothed in white raiment when they got there said, he's not here. He got up. <laughs> Flavius, Philo, Josephus, that are, that, that, are, that are historians in the secular world, they say, he got up. <laughs> Athanasius and Augustine in the third century from Ethiopia, they were saying, he got up. <laughs> There were 500 people that were there looking when he went into the sky. They all told their family members, I was there. He was up and he left. There's a guy by the name of Graves. He writes a book called uh, The World's 16 Crucified Saviors. And it's all mythological. None of it has been substantiated or corroborated. He just writes this book as an atheist that says that in history, in the Greek history, in the Jewish history, uh, in, in the Latin history, etc., there's been Jesus is popping up way before Jesus. But there's one thing. He cited all them, but he couldn't come up with one archaeological. He couldn't come up with, ar with one artifact. He couldn't come up with one historian. He couldn't come up with no documents. He couldn't come up with no text, no scripts, no scrolls, no parchments, no nothing. And for thousands of years, that's been inalienable proof that Jesus died on the cross. He slept in the grave and the Lord raised him up. There may be someone here, door to church was opened by Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago. We don't want to rush you, but you need Jesus.